former PNB boss Abdul Jalil Abdul Rashid is now the new CEO of Berjaya Corp, marking the first time the position is held by a non-member of the Tan family. He takes over from Datuk Sri Robin Tan Yong Ching, who has been promoted and redesignated as the Executive Deputy Chairman of the conglomerate. In a statement to the boss, Berjaya Corp said Jalil will work together with its executive chairman Tan Sri Vincent Tan and Robin Tan as an executive committee. Together with the board members, the trio will be involved in all strategic decision-making and planning of the group's future business direction. The new appointments were made to transform Berjaya Corp into an institutionalised corporation managed by professionals. Jalil's mandate will be to relook at Berjaya Corp's corporate structure, optimise financial and human resources, improve synergies and efficiency, enhance corporate governance and transparency, streamline the various group businesses to create and enhance shareholder value and to transform it into a high-performing organisation. The World Bank expects Malaysia to cross the high-income country threshold between 2024 and 2028. But its transition is more gradual compared to other countries that have made it, partly due to many factors within policymakers' control. Richard Record, the bank's lead economist for Malaysia, spoke to Reuters ahead of today's launch of the bank's flagship report on the country. He told the Newswire that the country is in striking distance of becoming a high-income income nation and that it needs high quality foreign investment to boost growth. However, that requires broad reforms of everything from the education system and labour participation to its investment promotional framework. Because the country is lagging in reforms of its policies that drove its 1970s to 1990s boom, Record reportedly said there is uncertainty about Malaysia's vision and what it can offer investors compared to regional peers. Earlier this month, Maida said foreign direct investment in Malaysia fell 56% to 3.4 billion US dollars in 2020. Meanwhile, Ang Tad said net FDI in Malaysia fell 68% to just over 2.5 billion US dollars last year, the worst drop in Southeast Asia amid the COVID-19 pandemic. Top Glove, a subsidiary of rubber glove maker Top Glove Corp, has been charged over its alleged failure to provide lodging that meets the minimum standards of housing and amenities for its factory workers. According to Bernama, Top Glove was charged in the Ipo Sessions Court in Perak with 10 counts of failing to provide Labour Department certified accommodation. The charges are for 10 different workers' housing at Pusat Perdagangan Tasik Mutiara in the Perak capital. Top Glove pleaded not guilty to all charges and the court set April 28th for remention. If found guilty, it could be fined up to 50,000 ringgit per charge. A COVID-19 outbreak was reported at Top Glove's dormitories in Klang Selangor last November and by the following month, it had become Malaysia's biggest cluster with over 5,000 infections. The outbreak prompted the authorities to declare an EMCO on the hostel and probe its dormitories in five other states. Investigations revealed that the group had failed to apply for an accommodation certificate from the Labour Department. The living quarters it provided was also described as dense, uncomfortable and lacking proper ventilation. Last month, Top Glove said it had resolved the overcrowding issues. Malacca-based property developer Teladan Setia Group made a commendable debut on Bursa's ace market with a 12 cent or 25 percent premium over its IPO price of 48 cent. The counter, which opened at 60 cent, paid some of the gains to close at 57 cent for a market value of 459 million ringgit. That's a first-day gain of 9 cent or 18.75 percent. In terms of trading volume, the Ladan Setia was the ninth most actively traded counter on Bursa Malaysia today, with 196.8 million shares changing hands. During a virtual press conference following its listing, the Ladan Setia Managing Director Richard Teo said of the IPO's 77.3 million ringgit proceeds, 35 million ringgit will be used for future land bank acquisitions in Malacca. 
He said the focus will be on affordable and landed residential units. Currently, the company's land bank has a GDV of 1.6 billion ringgit, inclusive of ongoing and future projects. As of September 2020, it had a property inventory of 43 million ringgit. The Ministry of Finance is currently undertaking a study on how to widen Malaysia's revenue base, including possibly reinstating the GST as well as reviewing tax incentive packages. According to Bernama, MOF Deputy Secretary General Zakia Jaffa said the ministry was about to embark on major fiscal reforms to strengthen the country's revenue capacity when the pandemic broke out. So, the ministry is now slightly distracted in maintaining a counter-cyclical stance until recovery is fully entrenched. Citing the limited fiscal room, she said the ministry is certainly looking at new tax reforms, which include reviewing the existing tax structure and possibly imposing new taxes. However, she said Putrajaya will wait until the economy has fully stabilised before making any major changes. The country currently collects only 70 percent of GDP in tax revenue, which is quite low relative to high-income nations. Zakia also noted that Malaysia has had a good growth track record, rebounding within a year from each of the five crises it experienced in the last five decades. She said the government is confident of repeating history.